Okay, we're going to now prove that a sequence diverges. And I'm just going to do the simplest sequence we can, so the identity function, f of n equals n. Okay. So, just before we do that, uh, we should talk about how do you negate a statement which has quantifiers. So, basically, I'm just going to use the definition of convergence as an example, and we're going to negate it. Okay, so what is the definition of convergence? The definition of convergence is for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists m element of the natural numbers, such that for all n element of the natural numbers, n greater than or equal to m implies absolute value of f of n minus the limit is less than epsilon. Okay, so when we negate quantifiers, you want to... Okay, that's better. When we negate quantifiers, essentially we leave the sets that are quantified over alone. We just leave them alone. So, to negate this statement, put negation out the front, put brackets around, and what we do is we swap the quantifiers, okay? And the negation moves in until it reaches some statement. Okay, so let's do that. So we move the negation in, so this becomes an existential. So the universal quantifier becomes an existential quantifier. The existential quantifier becomes a universal quantifier. The universal quantifier becomes an existential quantifier. Now something which is important at this stage is to note that when you have quantifiers which are not the same, so existential, universal, existential, you can't change the order of the quantifiers because when you do that it changes the meaning of the statement. If you have two or more quantifiers which are the same in order, you can change the order of the statement, the order of the quantifiers. So if you have for all x element r, for all y element r, p of x, y holds, you can change the order of these quantifiers. So you can write for all y element r, for all x element r, p of x, y. And these will mean the same thing. So that's cool. But remember, if they are not the same, so if it's existential, quant, existential, universal, existential, don't change the order. Okay, so now that we've negated the quantifiers, we have to negate the implication. Now in a previous video, I said that implication A implies B is equivalent to not A and not, sorry, not A and not B. So when we negate implication, we can essentially substitute this in for implication and negate that instead. So, negate that. Now in binary logic, well, not all binary logic, but in the logic we're working with, when you negate, when you have two negations in a row, you can eliminate them. So, we get rid of that. So the negation of A implies B is equivalent to A and not B. So let's put that in. So we're almost finished. Now we've just got to negate this inequality. 
So when you negate an inequality, if this is a strict inequality, you flip it and make it a equal to, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So in this case, it'll become the absolute value of f of n minus l is greater than or equal to epsilon. Greater than or equal to epsilon. Okay. That's pretty cool. So now we have negated a statement with multiple quantifiers. Okay. Now that's all well and good, but it's actually a little bit more difficult to prove that a sequence diverges using this than it is to use some sort of basic logic and real and and essentially work from properties of convergent sequences to the fact that if they if a sequence doesn't have those properties then it can't converge. Okay, so let's get rid of this. So the little piece of logic we're going to use is that if we know if we know A implies B, so say doesn't matter, but we know A implies B, and we also know not B then we can conclude, therefore, not A. So say A, say this is some sequence is convergent, and whenever a sequence is convergent, it has a property B. Therefore, if we show that not B is true, we can conclude not A. That is, that the sequence does not converge. The sequence is divergent. So, in the notes, one of the theorems that is proved is that if A of N converges, then A of N is bounded. So, bounded means it has both a lower and an upper bound. So, if we want to show that the sequence doesn't converge, it's sufficient to show that it's not bounded